In this video, I'm going to show you what I know to be called a double fisherman's knot. That might not be the actual name, but it's the name that I know it by. What this knot is used for is connecting two lines of similar diameter to one another. And it's ironic because this is actually one of the first knots that I've learned to know. Um, but it's probably the knot that I use the most seldom. Um, just because there's a lot of extra steps involved with this knot, and I find that uh, it's, it's a little bit time consuming as well. Uh, not so much for strength. Strength wise, this knot is actually quite strong. Um, when it came to dissimilar lines, say if one line is thicker than the other, in my past experiences, I have not had favorable results with this. However, with similar diameter line, say for example, six pound to six pound, uh, this works remarkably well actually. And it's, it's more or less the same as a, a, a fisherman's knot, only you're going to be doing it with equal sides. You're just, in this case, you're going to wrap the line a few times around either end, and they're identical for each side. When I'm out in the field, if I am using this knot, I'll typically do between six to eight wraps, something like this. And there you have the knot there. If you're going to be using a plasticky like line, for example, a monofilament line, I would highly recommend lubricating the line in water or any other lubricant that you may choose to use. I'm using brightly colored mason line for you today so that you can see the knot in better detail. In this part of the uh, video, I'm going to show you the exact same knot, only I'm going to be using a thicker monofilament line. This is 15 pound test, so that you can see it a little bit better. But the knot is exactly the same. Pinch it in the middle. Twist the one end six to eight times, or however many times you feel fit. Tuck the working end back um, where the intersection between the two lines are, where your thumb, pardon me, where your thumb and forefinger were holding. It doesn't matter if you go from the top down or the bottom up, you're going to get the same result either way. You can see why I don't use this very often. It's very um, cumbersome to manipulate monofilament line using this technique. And you do the exact same thing on the other side. Again, it doesn't matter if you go from the top down or from the bottom up, you're going to get the same result either way. Perfect. And there you have it. I have i don't think I've ever had this knot actually slip out um, in the past. It, uh, it, it's a very strong knot actually. Um, but it's just there's a lot of extra steps involved, which is why I don't use it too often. Go ahead and lubricate the line and gently pull it tight. I wipe the excess lubricant off in this case, but you can leave it there if you choose. And then in the field, what I typically do is I'll trim off the tag ends. Um, usually I'll leave a sixteenth of an inch or a millimeter or two of, uh, of material still on the knot. And the reason for that is in case anything decides it wants to stretch um, or come loose, then there's a little bit of play right there. You can see those tiny little tag ends there. There's nothing uh, too major about it. I, and when it comes to casting, I've never really had much of a, an issue with hangups either with this. And there you have it, a good solid strong knot.